Welcome back there, buds. About the past week or so, I've been getting into doing some more hand cut dovetail joints because I'm gonna make a good series of boxes for the holidays, for gifts and things like that. So, I figured I better start practicing now. So, I have a few of them lined up that I've done. That's one of the first ones. And none of them are pretty. This is definitely one skill that is going to take years of practice. These are the most recent two I did. They're, they're looking better. What I realized I was doing here in the beginning, my, uh, looks like most people when they make it, they make the pin board come out at the ends and then just dovetails in the middle. When I was first starting, I was going with the dovetails like the whole way to the end. I don't know if that is, uh, if there's any purpose why you would or wouldn't do that, or if it's just a personal preference. He's trying to steal all these and eat them, go. <laughs> so, what I got, I've had this old coping saw. I picked this up, I actually found this at this like trading post store not far from me. And it was just hanging there for like $9. And this was the condition it was in and everything. But uh, yeah, it's a dovetail saw. And it's, uh, I don't know, it was brand new, but it had a little bit of rust there. It's not even rust. I don't know what it is. Anyways, it's not bad. It's not the best. And then I just picked up these on Amazon. Little marking gauge. And uh, another marking gauge. Those were... I think this was the most expensive thing I bought. It was $15. It's a Rockler. I think this might have been seven. Yeah, that was like nine. It was free. So that's about what I got now for starters, just to get going with it. And the other day, I decided I would make a new urn for my old dog, Harry. That's Bucko. <laughs> so, this will be Harry's new urn. I've been wanting to make one. Had to put him down about a year and a half ago. And it was horrible. But, Bucko keeps me, keeps me busy. So, this, I figured, also, why not just do this, and I don't even care how good it is, because it's obviously not going to be great. You know, it's like the first box that I ever made. As you can see, I accidentally ran the dado through, so we'll fill that in. But, uh, yeah, I just made that top, just glued another little piece there. Yeah, and then that, his ashes will go in there. It shouldn't be bad. What I'm going to do, too, is just uh, carve, you can see... Oh, hairy tattoo. So that milk bone, I'm going to carve that milk bone on the top there. And there'll be like a little handle, a little detail, I'll put his name on it. So, I think to get started, I'm just going to, I got my sander set up. I'm just going to take that, get those joints all cleaned up and get some filler and everything. And uh, let that dry so I can start carving that top hand. All right, now that all that's sanded up, I can get in here with some filler and just fill in any of the cracks and holes and everything that are left. And let that dry up real good before I sand that anymore. And then I can also just sand, fill any holes or anything on this. Let that dry up. This needs a bit of sanding too. It's looking a little rough. 
So when you know your router bits are not sharp at all. And then I can also get started there carving up the top. And then one more thing on the finish. I'm using this, you know, red oak, kind of red tinted filler because the, for the final finish on this, I think this was going to look pretty nice with uh, like a nice deep dark red, uh, you know, color finish on that. Now that I got that all set up and uh, got that filler drying, probably just leave that overnight because that was pretty deep. It's pretty deep holes to fill. So I can just work on getting this carving to the top. Don't want it to be too big or too small. Maybe take up half of it. Yeah. Something like that. It's a pretty good size. That'll look pretty good. Let's go get this cut out on the bandsaw. When I first got that started there, I know they're traditionally like straight, but kind of mess it up and start a curve. And I thought that might actually look a little better if it was curved like that. Terry was a little bit curved himself. He was a little bit, he wasn't all there. So make it a little different for him. So I got this all roughed out basically about the height they want it. So I'm just going to go basically just round all the edges over and I think what I might do is wood burn a couple little dots in his name and it should look pretty good.
Well, that's all finished up now. Now I just need to figure out a way how to attach it to there and also do a little bit of wood burning on there. I think it will look pretty pretty good on top of that. So I'll just get the old wood burner heated up and uh, get his name on there. Well, that filler got to dry up overnight. Now I'm just going to take the sander, sand it up real quick, hit it by hand, and uh, should be able to get some finish on it. Get it all finished up today. Alright, now this is all sanded up, what I'm going to do is attach this to the top. I'm going to use some uh, inch and a half slotted wood screws. I'm going to pre-drill through a little countersink. So what I'm going to do... Is kind of mark... Let's try to find middle. Almost put the screws right where those two dots are. Put a little mark about there, there, under there, and about there, and there. So then, just intersect those two points. That's where one goes, that's where the other goes. Sand those off so we don't ever see them. Scrap board to drill into. So you don't have any blowouts. Alright, thickness of that, inch and a half, thickness of this, three quarter. So we have eh, this is inch and a half. Should probably go in half of three quarters, three eighths. 
I don't want to pre-sink it the whole way up through there. Let's do about half of this, maybe a little over half. Now for this piece, I'm just going to do a hand rub finish with the product that I like to use, old Waterlux. It's a mix of tongue oil, linseed oil, it's got some resin so it's kind of like a, uh, some type of like a varnish. Really makes the grain pop, looks good, it's very durable. And I just, uh, for a piece like this you want to have that, you know, old hand rub look plus it it has a nice amber in color so if I was just to spray the lacquer on you know just it doesn't I don't think it has quite the character so with this just gonna get the bottoms here let them sit up and dry so with this I'll just take a rag and just wipe it on let's get a good seal coat on it So far I have on there that two coats of tongue oil, let that dry a bit, and we went with two, maybe three coats of the tinted lacquer, or sorry, tinted shellac, padded that on. Then when that was dry, I sanded it pretty fine with some 400 and then steel wool. And then I just went ahead and took this finishing wax and I just buffed it all on there pretty heavy and I'm gonna let it set I think I typically only use this for like shop tools and things like that to like wax up uh, you know table saw things like that once in a while I'll use it on like drawer slides make drawers go pretty pretty smoothly but uh, 
It's the first time I'm really using it with a finish. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just pretty much read the directions here, just seeing how it goes. They're telling me to let this dry 10 to 15 minutes and then just polish it with a clean cloth. Now I think it should be pretty good. Well, buds, here we are. Another one done. No Harry in there yet, but maybe at least somebody will remember who he is. He's got a, a new final resting place. It's the end of the day. Got a nice little straw beer. Steelers are playing tonight. Couldn't get better. So, if you like what you see, you want to stay in touch, subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, follow along, and stay tuned for a very sad montage of 